Here in our second hands-on Revit lab, we're going to take a look at a few additional tools. We're going to load some families that we'll need. We're going to create rooms and room tag. We're going to look at generating section views. And we're going to create some axon views as well. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do in our second lab is we're going to need to create a level again. So once again, I'm going to come to my north elevation view. Come up here to our level tool on our datum panel still on our architectural tab I'm going to click for that I'm going to come down and I'm going to once again add this level at 10 feet floor to floor I'm going to click to begin my grid line drag across and Revit will snap in place I'm going to hit escape to end my command I'm going to zoom in now for this project, I asked for a 15 foot floor to floor height. So we're going to need to change our finished floor elevation for both of our levels. I'm going to double click on our level too. And if you actually take a look, if you click the bottom half, you will see that dimension is, becomes editable. We're going to change that to 15 feet, 1, 5, and I'm just going to hit enter. And we're going to do the same thing again on our level 3. We're going to rename our level 3 once again to be associated with roof. This is the top of our building. Yes, I would like to rename the corresponding views. Now that we have started and adjusted and created the levels that we needed for our projects, I'm going to click on our level 1 floor plan and begin to lay out the walls. I'm going to hit modify because I can see I was still in my level command, but I'm going to come back up to our architectural tab and I'm going to click on our wall tool to begin laying out the walls. For my wall type selector, I'm going to come click the drop down and for our exterior walls which we're going to lay out first we're going to use a generic 12 inch wall our base constraint is at level one and our top constraint we're going to assign it all the way to the roof once again up to roof it's important to change these parameters before laying out the walls they can be edited after the fact but it's a best practice to get used to changing these base and top of wall constraints ahead of time when we can. So I'm going to begin to lay out just the perimeter. I'm going to, have, I'm going to come across 90 feet. I'm just going to have my cursor in this direction. 90 hit enter. I'm going to come down. We know there are parameters 80 feet. I'm going to type that in as well. Hit enter. going to come across 30 feet once again I'm going to come up I'm going to come up 32 feet I'm going to come across 30 feet again I'm going to allow Revit to snap to the center line of the wall I've already created. And I'm going to allow Revit to snap to close this perimeter wall layout. Now while I'm still in my wall command, I'm going to begin to lay out the interior walls as well. For these interior walls though, I'm going to need to come back up to my properties and change to a generic 5 inch wall. That we're going to use to lay out our interior walls and our top of wall constraint I now want to make sure that we're only going up to level 2 not the roof in this instance then I'm going to come into our model space and begin to lay out these walls as well because I know that I want to maintain an 8 foot corridor on this inside courtyard my temporary dimension I'm going to line that up with 8 feet 
I'm actually just going to click out here at a distance. I'm going to actually modify this wall after we have it placed. And I'm just going to lay these interior walls out. Now I'm going to hit escape twice to get out of my command because I would like to modify this wall. See when I click on this wall it's actually giving me a temporary dimension here of 8 foot 6. I'm zooming in and out with my mouse right now. I'm going to double click on this dimension. I'm just going to change that to 8 feet. maintaining my 8 foot wide corridor around the plan. I'm going to come back up to our wall tool again and lay out the rest of my interior walls. Just double check we're still using a generic 5 inch wall. Our base and our top of wall constraints are still level 1 and level 2 respectively. I'm going to come in here I'm just going to lay out my walls. I'm going to lay out my wall here. I'm going to lay out another wall here. Here. And I'm going to actually line this up with my wall across. Selecting here as well. I have one more interior wall to lay out, and I'm going to line that up as you can see with my exterior perimeter wall and just snap perpendicular. So here we are. We have the majority of our spaces line, lined up. Next, I would like us to hit escape twice to get out of our wall command. We're going to come up here to our door tool on the architectural tab and I'm going to click to add my door. I'm going to come down to my type selector. My 36 by 84 door is, is fine. And we're just going to insert this door into the perimeter walls I'm sorry, the interior walls where we need that. If I hit spacebar, it will actually allow me to flip the orientation. And since I know that the sketch that I've given you for this tutorial shows the door rotated like such, just hit spacebar and I can rotate it prior to even placing the door. store in here. Now for the exterior wall we're going to need to add double doors in order to accomplish the intent of our design. For this we're going to need to come up here to load family on the contextual ribbon while we're still in that door command. It's important that you remain in this door command. If not you'll have to go back to it. I'm going to click on load family Revit's going to bring me out to the system families that Revit gives us by default. I'm going to click on my door folder, come in here, and pick an overhead door. I'm sorry, a double door. So we can get a double glass door, a double panel door. We're going to stick with the double panel door. And you, Revit will actually give you a preview over here where you can see what the door we're picking what the panel layout is as well. It might take a moment for Revit to load that door. Once that door is loaded, you'll now see our double panel door which gives us a few different sizes as well. We're going to select our 72 by 84 inch and I'm going to place it these two areas where we need 
an exterior double door.